The Spinal Cord Assessment Tool for Spasticity, SCATS, is a unique clinical assessment tool that was developed to distinguish and measure the severity of different types of spastic behaviors, that is, clonus, flexor, and extensor spasms in spinal cord injury. In people with an intact spinal cord, neural circuits in the spinal cord are under direct control of brain centers, which allow for smooth, coordinated movements. After a spinal cord injury, the spinal circuits below the level of injury become hyperactive. Hyperactivity in these spinal circuits results in increased involuntary, mistimed, and often repetitive muscle contractions, which are commonly referred to as spasms, or more generally, as spasticity. These spasms can be debilitating, interfering with activities of daily living. Spasms are triggered by specific sensory cues, including touch and movements imposed to the legs. There are three distinct types of spasms that are frequently reported by patients and clinicians. Clonus, particularly at the ankle, flexor spasms, and extensor spasms. Clonus is an involuntary rhythmic muscle contraction occurring at three to eight times each second, and it is typically produced by rapid passive dorsiflexion of the ankle. Flexor spasms are described as involuntary flexion movements of the leg following stimulation of the skin, and extensor spasms are leg extension movements that occur after changes in hip position. The SCATS enables the clinician and the patient to estimate the extent to which each component of spasticity is contributing towards functional disability and therefore aid in the management of spasticity. Clonus of the plantar flexors is measured as the response to a rapid passive dorsiflexion of the ankle. The ankle is rapidly dorsiflexed to an angle that triggers clonus and the duration of clonic bursts is timed. Based on the duration of clonic activity, a score between 0 and 3 is assigned, where 0 is no reaction, 1 is clonus maintained less than 3 seconds, 2 is clonus persisting between 3 and 10 seconds, and 3 is clonus persisting for more than 10 seconds. Now Tina will demonstrate the clonus test. Okay, we're on this next test. I'm going to take your ankle and give it a quick stretch, and I'm looking to see if there are a few beats of reflex in there, okay? And we're going to time it. So just relax for me. Ready? Try one more time. Okay, and one more. In this example, our patient did not have clonus. His SCATS clonus score was zero. Flexor spasms are assessed using a pinprick stimulus. With the knee and hip extended to zero degrees, a pinprick stimulus is applied to the medial arch of the patient's foot. Excursion of the big toe into extension, ankle dorsiflexion, and knee and hip flexion are visually observed for severity. The rating scale consists of a score from zero to three, where zero is no reaction to the stimulus, one is a mild reaction with less than 10 degrees of excursion and flexion at the knee and hip or extension of the great toe, Two is a moderate reaction with 10 to 30 degrees of flexion at the knee and hip. And three is a severe reaction with 30 degrees or greater of knee and hip flexion. Okay, Ron, I'm going to take the end of this reflex hammer and I'm going to stroke the bottom of your foot. That should cause your leg to pull up towards your body and then eventually it should relax. We're going to see how far your leg moves. You ready? Okay. Okay, good. In this example, our patient demonstrated a SCATS flexor spasm score of 1. Extensor spasms are triggered using an imposed extension movement of the leg. With the contralateral limb extended, the tested knee and hip are positioned at flexion angles of approximately 90 to 110 degrees, and then both joints are simultaneously extended. Once a visible muscle contraction in the quadriceps is seen, the duration of the contraction is measured by observing the displacement of the patella. Based on the duration of contraction, a score between 0 and 3 is assigned, where 0 is no reaction, 1 is contraction maintained less than 3 seconds, 2 is contraction persisting between 3 and 10 seconds, and 3 is contraction persisting for more than 10 seconds. Okay, Ron, for this test, I'm going to take your leg and bend it up to about 90 degrees at your hip and your knee, and then I'm going to let it down on the table. I'm expecting that that'll make the muscles contract, and we're going to time how long it takes to relax. Okay? okay. All right. Let me get you up here. Okay, I'm going to start the stopwatch, actually. All right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay.
Our patient has a SCATS extensor spasm score of 3. Based on the SCAT scores, it is now apparent that our patient's main problem is extensor spasms and to a lesser extent flexor spasms, but not clonus. SCATS is therefore a useful tool to resolve the different components of spasticity. It can be easily and quickly administered in the clinic and is helpful in quantifying the severity of each component of spasticity for comparison across subjects and times.